Okay, today we're having a look at the Belcom LS102L for Lima, and I'm also playing around with um, what is a, um, I can't really show it to you because I've got it in the stand, but it's what they call a, um, a gimbal system. Uh, it's the Vilta M Pro gimbal system, which I have had very little time with. So I shouldn't even be doing this video like this because um, quite seriously, apart from knowing how to um, uh, make it go up and around and, you know, etc. Um, you know, uh, pans up and down and has a bit of a look at our workshop equipment, etc. All very nice. Um, probably this is a better unit for, um, you know, sort of when you're uh, walking around, if you're a tourist, actually. Uh, and I'm not sure this is going to do what we want to do, but you know what, for $150, I thought, hey, let's give this a go. Anyway, so we are. So I'm, this is probably really good if I'm trying to show you something internally in a radio like this, and I, I need both hands to get in there while I'm, you know, um, otherwise my, you know, jumping around the place with the camera probably will be fine so we'll see how that goes anyway so we're just having a bit of a play um, and let's have a bit of a look um, now this is a Belcom LS 102L and already I can see issues where you know this camera is a little bit higher than where it needs to be it needs to be lower which I can't sort of do in the situation I am right now I mean you ideally would like to be looking at this at this height you know so we'll we'll have a bit of a play with that and see if we can get that um, um, sorted out just so it can be a little better Okay, um, so this came in for a mate of mine in WA, and I actually was doing a video on it, unfortunately, before, and someone rang, and it, it killed my video. So I do know a lot about this radio, um, which I did five minutes of video before the call was interrupted, and unfortunately, uh, that's my fault. I, I had the phone on, which um, we've just gone and bought another phone exactly for that, for the camera and for the data, and we just want it to basically not, um, it's on an entirely separate phone number, so no one will know that phone number, so no one can ring in, um, it won't have Skype enabled, etc. so, you know, no loss of um, video, but anyway, that's my fault. Um, so, what did we find out? Um, initially, uh, I'll go back to the start, uh, and I don't know, depending on how much we'll get this thing to do now, uh, the last video actually had a lot more on it. Uh, we might try and combine some of that footage from that last video. Um, we'll have a look. One, two, one, two. Yeah, okay. So it's um, yeah, it's gone back to being dead again, unfortunately. We did have a little bit of it working for a bit. Um, not all. We did prove um, before this Belcom microphone's faulty. Um, so we, if you ever have a Belcom mic, just remember, SBE, same wiring, um, same insert, same everything. So you can put one of those in. Now, unfortunately... Um, we're getting nothing uh, and I must admit we were getting some carrier with the other microphone and we were getting carrier and modulation um, One two three one two. Yeah, no, it's gone out of lock again um, And it's as you can see neither the 28 or the 29 meg light is now coming up in the previous video Which we may have to do a bit of ed editing here, but just take my word for it Initially it had 28 megs or 29 being switchable from here to here. Oh look at that actually 29 just came up Okay, let's see if the light comes up one, two, one, two, no, nothing there, all right. Bugger, actually thought we might have been getting somewhere then. Um, now, I had, now the VFO becomes inoperative at times. Um, right now, it's back to being operational. Um, uh, this might allow us to do a bit of a test. Now, look at that. It's working one way. So no matter what I do here, it just keeps on going up. I can go backwards all I want, I'm going up, go forwards all, yep. Now, at one stage it wasn't doing that. Um, keep in mind we've had this radio on the bench for five minutes so far and uh, initially it didn't come up with any audio as well um, so we, we reset it and basically it did come up with audio. So let's just go back to see 20, 28 megs is not locking but can we get 21212? No we can't even get anything to transmit on 29. Yeah look this really has got some issues. Um, now a bit of background um, this has come from a very, very good seller. Um, that's that's not the issue. Um, this was actually serviced in the UK. Um, you'll notice on the side that uh, I need to get permission to get into this because uh, there's been stickers put on the side after all the service work done in the UK, void if removed. Now, I'm not so much worried about the void if removed. Um, uh, I'm, I'm more worried about uh, courtesy, to be honest. Um, and, and quite seriously, it's a bit of a courtesy thing to um, talk to um, and then this video is going to very quickly become a video on courtesy with buying stuff. Um, don't always, you know, go crazy at the seller. Uh, it's it's often, you know, something that's achievable to be fixed and sorted and all those types of things. This uh, looks to have a bit of a PLL VCO fault. Okay, so 
Now it's locked up on 29, it's losing its light, it's losing its light here on both now. So it's a PLL VCO fault, um, especially with this, look at that. So I've just been able to, I've just been able to trick it, but see how it, it's still, the rotary encoder here, uh, or whatever system they're using, I'll have to have a look inside, is, is not responding. Um, I did have a stage where I had it responding up, down, but you know, unfortunately um, that was only for about some um, 30 seconds. Um, uh, one of the things that I'd always suggest is, you know, when you get a radio like this, it's an old 1980s radio, maybe late 70s, 80s radio. Um, turn it off for a little while. Um, just, uh, and I mean actually, uh, like I've done, um, disconnect the power over here. Uh, we've actually taken the whole power lead off and basically said, right, let's just let it sit there for a couple of minutes um, uh, while I bore you to tears. But um, sometimes you'll find what it'll do, little whizzy thing this thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll leave that go a little bit longer. Um, sometimes the reset, um, it, look, the reset won't fix the problem as such. You know you've got a fault in there that you're going to keep on coming back. It's, it's There's no question it's going to keep coming back. Um, uh, but with a radio this rare, you also have to say to yourself, well, you know, um, what's it worth to get it going? Well, it's, it's probably worth the investment of time. Um, I'm not sure... Uh, look, I'm no expert on Belcom, Belcom LS102Ls yet. Uh, I have a feeling after I talk to my mate WA, I'm about to become one. Um, but um, knowing that I can contact the chap in the UK that's done a fair bit of work to it and, you know, send him this video and say, hey, um, any, any thoughts with everything you've done? Now, let me just put some um, power back on this. Okay, sorry, I haven't quite got that. Let me just turn that off for a minute. I just want to get that right on... There, yeah, that's better. Sorry, I just, just wanted to click on correctly. All right, so we've got that up. See, once again, up, down, not happening. Okay, so so we know what the issue is, but do we? Because the truth is, um, <laughs> if I was to say, plug into my generator, uh, uh, let's just choose something, a frequency I can stabilize on, triple five. So, so let's call it, we're on 29 megs at the moment. Uh, I'm just gonna put it to my monitor, uh, 29. 555. Five, five. I'm going to inject a signal, and as I would have predicted, there is absolutely nothing there. Um, it's it's not able to see a thing. Um, and look, I'll, I'll just show you what we're doing. Where uh, I have to sort of do this for a second. Um, <laughs> it's a bit. Um, oh boy, I tell you, um, it's it's this uh, this gimbal thing interesting. But I need to get to you, use it a bit more. So we're putting in. Um, oh, this is actually putting a lot more than that. Sorry. Come around. All right, so about 50 microvolts, and we're seeing absolutely nothing. So, you know, um, geez, I'll tell you what, it's a lot steadier when you hold it with this unit, even if you're doing it as a handheld, which it is designed to do. Um, but, um, yeah, okay, so, and I've just got to learn how to then get it back into place when I'm coming back to the desk. But, yes, as you can see, I'm doing that terribly. Uh, let's have a little bit of a look. All right, so... What we've basically got, as I manually try and make that happen, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. It actually has its own auto um, system on this gimbal. Oh, interesting. All right. Okay, so we know, okay, we've got nothing happening there, nothing happening in transmit, so we're bang, 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 nothing. Uh, AM, nothing. Sideband, one, two, nothing. So uh, for all intents and purposes, a very dead radio, um, which uh, has got multiple problems, but don't kid yourself uh, when I say multiple problems it probably comes back to one thing causing it you know, I just can't get that to go backwards now uh, it, it's funny I did before uh, it actually wanted to for a little bit um, yeah so it's really just wanting to so the, so whatever they use now the feel of that it feels like a road like a very early model rotary encoder but I don't know now there you go it's just locked up and you can see when it locks up it loses the 29 meg light so that is a really good sign of the radio. Um, it's PLL VCO voltages are all, all over the place. Something, you know, it just lost lock. And um, unfortunately, you know, there's very little way, probably apart from a reset. And with this one, as you can see, you reset it. And we are getting a little bit back. For some reason, at 28 megs, uh, no, it doesn't want to do anything. So it's in a little bit of trouble. Anyway, so there will be a follow-up video on this one, of course. Um, and we'll probably try and go through what happens to a Belcom LS102L and hopefully show you some a uh, little bit of insight as to how to fix one of these little 10 meter radios and you know make it uh, get back to uh, doing its normal stuff 
And um, <clears throat> excuse me, for, for those of you that are about to say to me, uh, do you realize that um, uh, the high low switch is often um, modified to a 27 meg switch? Yeah, I do realize that. Um, so that, that's okay. Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, um, uh, even if that mod was done, as you can see, it's doing exactly the same. So quite seriously, I actually don't think um, that um, uh, the mod may be done on this one, but um, it, look, it may well be, I don't know. Um, we've had it into dummy load the whole time that we've had it running. So we've certainly kept it um, uh, legal in the respect of, um, uh, we've got a, a scientific license, um, even if it was you know, uh, potentially out of band. But at the moment, I can't even prove whether it's out of band or not due to the uh, issues that we've got here which is um, one of those things. So, um, yeah, just having a bit more of a look, but no, look, she's gonna be one that's, um, oh, first of all, um, and this is the protocol. Um, first, go to the person that you bought it from. Um, if you're a tech, really what you're asking is, hey, um, would you mind, could I just drop the covers off it and have a little look at just what, um, uh, it, it could be something simple. You could have a loose connector. You could have um, a, a wire that's come loose. Lots of things, lots and lots of things, you know, that can happen. That are that are really doesn't take much to make a um, PLL VCO uh, stage suddenly you know not work if uh, if something's come adrift. So you know that's the first.